Greetings. Today, I would like to talk to you about mixing my latest album release for immersive audio. For those of us who are new to this concept, I would like to briefly explain what is this new frontier of audio production, where instead of outputting your song into two channels of stereo that suits your two ears, you can now immerse yourself in sound coming from all direction at the same time, also above and under. This is a new frontier for me, um, producing for immersive audio and 360 environment, and I'm very excited to work with a very seasoned professional in that field around you. It's not just a stereo, it's not just left and right, right, but this, it's uh, immersive, meaning speakers are located all over you and above and under. So it's uh, audio coming around you. It's not just frontal anymore, it's around you, not just front and back, it's also from top to bottom. So and I believe this is uh, the future of, of the next generation of, of audio production and... Well, I mean, I would say, I would hop in and say that, yes, we have two ears, but, our, but we were designed to hear things from behind us and in front of us. Mm. When we were starting off as a race, as a, hu a, hu a human race, if you're being chased by something behind you, your ears can perceive that. So that same tool that our ears have to hear front and back and height, we'll hear front and back and height here in this room. And the other thing I like to say is that in all our years of stereo experience, you're sitting in front and hearing something from up front and front of you, you sit down and hear it. In this room or in 3D sound in general, you're hearing it from around you, so you're in the center of, mm. of the uh, piece of music. When we came to recorded music, we had we started with mono because there was not nothing available as than mono. Right, just not because it was an ideal channel, it was just that's how it started. And then the next thing was stereo because there was no more than two channel te technology uh, available. Uh, so it was never thought or is that is the ideal point of listening is stereo. We just so used to over all these many decades, we only heard stereo. Mm -hmm. Now that will be coming on now is actually a much more natural uh, environment to listen to to anything audio related, mm -hmm. and uh, especially music. It gives you, as I said before, really a lot of, of creative potentials. What you can do as a producer, as a musician. How to and I know um, Eric's been involved in uh, creating. Um, historic timeline of how music was produced, right. produced for the Grammy Museum a couple of years ago. Can right, we put together a piece where we showed starting off with a cylinder recording as mono, then a 78, then a 33, then a cassette, CD, and it expands to surround, and then the final step is immersive. But we took a piece of, of I took, took a pop song that we knew, and I said, here's how it would sound when sound first started to be scratchy and thin, it just kept expanding. And at the end, it expands into the entire room. Mm -hmm. So it shows people just to add, it shows people the process of how sound is changed. Right, right. So what is a normal workflow of recording for immersive? How is it different, like for um, young musicians or for creative people who want to experiment in that space? How? How is it different from recording from stereo and what it involves? What is the workflow that um, brings well, us to well the Well, the ideal, I mean, often what we do, of course, here is now legend, uh, recording is only done. Often, usually projects are done and they're coming to us and then we make an immersive mix. And that where you start as a from the multi-track files, we're starting to, to, uh, to find out what we can do in immersive, so it can be done. Um, of course, we, we go from the musical, parts out, so we, we actually analyzing the score, what was, was the production, the different elements, what is related, where is there a melody, what has a melody and answer in, in, in another instrument or in another voice, in another vocal voice, or is there rhythmical patterns what, what are related to, so we maybe then give the rhythmical patterns to a different place, or a, a flute answers a saxophone, or one a female vocal answers a, a male vocal, and this can be eventually put close together because that what belongs, but eventually it can be in different location, like you have a conversation. Yeah, in, in musically speaking, polyphonic, you know, we have polyphonic different lines, how the polyphony work together, and then you can spread them out into the space to make it much more 
transparent and make it more conversational or theatrical if you want, then it would have been possible in stereo. This has also the effect in stereo, you have things like they're all in two speakers, so they're mm -hmm. all kind of compact. Right. When you spread them out, you hear them much more details. Also, you, you have to have uh, better quality in production, ideally. You have better musicians because every little, little tiny mistake or so, you hear now, of course, much, much more because it's out in the open. So the ideal project flow is if the composer or the producer on the first day when they have this idea of a project or an album already have in mind we do it if you want to do it he or she want to do it in immersive that would be the end end product but then you can start composing or creating with an immersive space in mind so that's the ideal much better than you have something already done in stereo and now we have to do it as an not an afterthought but then now we, we take the material and then put it into immersive so the ideal is it starts with the musician with the producer with the composers of the concept, talking to Eric, to me, what can be done, how, how do you see that. Uh, then they're starting actually writing, starting playing, starting recording, recording all in specific ways, because obviously if everything is recorded together, we cannot do much. If it's more isolated, the sound sources, we can put it better in space. So this all steps, what has to be thought at, in advance, that's the ideal, would be the ideal situation. So is there any additional uh, setup needed for a recording for Immersive, or is it just a generic well, multi-track? Well, I'll give you an example. If um, example song, we mixed song time, and we did a sound gar garden song. And rock is, is, is uh, sometimes a little hard to do Immersive, but in this case, I had a lot of room mics for the drums, which worked out great for us because we could put room mics in back up top, some here, so we were creating a space, mm. and so the the uh, the other point to me is when I the guy that taught me when I was very young, who was a Mo, a Motown guy, said to me, "Stereo got good when people started thinking in stereo." Mm. Suppose the mono, and I would say to you that now now that you've been here and know what your stuff can sound like in immersive, I would imagine that the next production you're going to do, you're going to be thinking about things that you can do because you've heard it in the environment. It's so very transformational experience. Yeah, I wanted to share that with you guys. It's just, uh, well, first of all, there's so many speakers around. So you're used to hearing, you know, your music and just left and right, you know, but now all of a sudden we got, how many speakers we got here? Nine? Well, in this case, it's 12. 12 speakers. Yeah, in this case, we have 12 that we use. Yeah. But so we, have, we have more speakers actually hanging around because this room <laughs> is actually designed specific for immersive mixing. Most what are the Sony main three, yeah, tell It's us, Dolby please. Atmos, mm -hmm. Sony 360 RA and MPEG-H. Okay. So, and they have all, Sony 360 for example has also floor speakers. We have three floor speakers on the, up here. So we don't want to have a big console here because if a big console is a big it piece gets of furniture. the way of the speakers. Sure. Yeah, you don't hear it. So, so that's so we keep it all very very uh, minimal, mm -hmm. so we can hear it. So and, and then you got the speakers around you on this level, and you have another speakers around on top five. Dolby doesn't have the floors and has different locations for the, for the heights. Has uh, four, uh, speakers. four speakers on top. So everything is a little bit different. We got it in this room so for, for every floor. So potentially three layers, from what I understand, right? The top, the middle, and the floor, floor for Sony. Yeah. And some like Sony offer this floor set, uh, floor level speakers, but Dolby Atmos does not. What Dolby has instead is a sub, but they don't have floor sub. speakers. So, example, if you're doing a orchestral piece, you can put the timpanis and the lower drums down below, or maybe basses or cellos a little bit below, so you can create a 3D height where things are here, here, and here, so it gives you a sense of space. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's very dynamic that way. Um, but you adapt to, if you're doing it in Atmos or, or the Sony format, you adapt knowing what, what, what you have. So you, we will change our technique to a, a certain extent. And I also understand that there's more channels now that are independently moveable uh, 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 along in those speakers, right? So you can have not just a stereo left and right, but you can have a multiple channels that can do yeah. um, movement in any way you can, you, you desire yeah, to if move. if you want to move a specific thing, I mean, we always take a musical approach. 
which means we don't move stuff just for the sake of it. We make a 3D sound that fits the piece, like for instance your piece is extremely layered. So as we work today, like I was saying, some we have we have a grounding where stuff is in certain positions and then we can move things that make sense to move. And it always depends upon the song and, and I always encourage people and Herbert does too that once you get the technical part down you have to think about what is gonna service the song the best. Mm. Yeah, thank you for you know sharing all the wisdom and working on you know my songs with uh, so much fun and I learned so much. I would like to ask you for our next session, next time I, I, I come here, uh, would there be any things that you would recommend uh, uh, for me to do differently? In terms because of I always tell people before they do this work they need to discuss. If you've done a stereo, we have to come up with a plan for the immersive. So a lot of times, like I did in this case, I want to talk to you or the person who's doing the mix so we can be the best prepared. Mm. Um, so as I had you send me the stuff, it, it was your sound files with your volumes and how you heard the blends. And as I explained, when you get in the 3D, you have to tweak the blends a little bit because they don't present the same mm -hmm. with all the speakers, but it's not drastic. And we have the creative, you know, when you're trying to mash it all into stereo, now suddenly the voices can be ones up here, ones in front, so things just have more space. The only thing I would say for future stuff is one of the things we try and do is have our reverbs be more quad or 3D. And you can print them that way where it makes it, um, we did a soundtrack last year for a game where it all came in quad stems and it gave us a lot of room to have front and back stuff and to and create space. My creator is also telling you as a producer and composer, you know, uh, it's a new sentence for me is technology serves not the music. Music, technology serves the music, but music should not deserve technology. Mm. So whatever technology is around you and all the different formats and all this, as, as to get started on a project, you shouldn't think about technology and what to do. You should just think about your music. Like my teacher told me, you know, as a, being a pianist, don't write music on the piano because as a pianist you'll be so used to, to one chord progression after the other what you always do have this a million times before so when you write on the piano you are just do this chord progression because that is what you always do so really being free and have a free idea you, you write abstract meaning get a pencil and a paper and get your thoughts down so you're not your mechanical movements uh, dictating you what, what to do next uh, and the same here when, when you should not think about what technology is it? What, 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 how to do this or that? You should be free in your mind how to write your music, how to you conceive your music. And then we, the, the music, you know, can be put into the technology. Not your technology is, is the first step right. of what, what you have in mind. Now you heard it, it means a listening experience. Now you heard it here, how it can be and what it can be done. Now you're just hearing. I have some spaces now where I could put an instrument, where I could put a melody, and the melody could ans be answered by another melody, or another phrase, and and this is having an ex experience. You have felt it. Mm -hmm. When you felt it, now you know as as a as a creative artist that that what you can do. And we have but and it is important, important to have a stereo mix w w uh, to bring content to you for immersive mixing. It's good to have a stereo mix already done, so you can kind of get a sense of. Well, I mean, yes, reference. I would say to an extent, I mean, we like to know how you hear it. Mm -hmm. if, you, if we were involved in the production from the beginning, I would say probably not. It's not as, you know, it's a different thing, but you've lived with this content for a long time and you've constructed it that way. So, or, you know, here's how, here's how I explain to people what I do in stereo as opposed to a immersive mix. If I take a Alicia Keys song I've done, I listen to stereo, I listen to how they viewed the balances and the concepts. So when I do immer immersive, I want to be true to how they blended it for the most part because it because that's how they hear the parts. And I can step out or we can step out a little bit from there. So it's really more of a reference. 
probably more uh, important when you're not working with the artist in the studio, but you're working remotely, so you can. But but we will use the stereo as a bit of a guidepost. But we but we can then depart, as Herbert will say, then we can depart from it as long as the musical bay bay basis feels the same. Like mm -hmm. I'm not going to take a drum that was soft in the mix and may make it very you know loud in this mix and an immersive. The only time that I would do that is if you come to me and say, I want a remix, mm -hmm. like you were doing a club remix. Mm -hmm. It doesn't need to be like my stereo. Then we would depart from the stereo. But this said, you know, Alicia Keys, so the original tracks were conceived originally in stereo. Right. Okay, what we are talking about, what I talked about before is, you start a new song and you start immersive in your mind. You start in a 3D experience. So you should, I think you should start thinking and writing in, in, an, in an immersive concept. And then this, the, the, the secondary what comes out is a stereo. So it's not necessarily we need a stereo to do immersive, but today everybody, well, you know, it's always first done in stereo and that is how the workflow works and that how we are trained and everybody knows how that works. And then how immersive was, they don't know. So that is then an add-on, mm. but it could be very well the other way around, and it should be, in reality, it should be the other way around. And then making out of an immersive concept a stereo is it's, it's an, it's another step. So you're saying like, before, first there was mono, and then there was stereo, and people, it took a little while for people to start thinking creatively in stereo. Right now we're going through a similar right. change exactly. where doing immersive next, audio okay. is here, and we need to adjust and adopt how to creatively make music for the immersive. Because immersive music, the step to immersive is, is huge. It's not just, you know, what is unfortunately often done today, oh, I just put instruments or voices or, or sound effects around me and I just place it here, place it there, oh, that looks cool and it sounds interesting and oh, there's a surprise, but it has no musical concept. Mm. It was just, and it's more, as the first moment you heard is, oh, wow, that's interesting. But if you hear this 20, 50 times, like you should hopefully listen to your song hundreds of times, it's at a certain point it gets boring because there's a musical reason be, because you put it here and there. Because the distraction. Be a, oh, I, I have a great way I put it to people, which is our goal is to make a cohesive sounding mix where it's immersive, where it feels like it fits together. If it's just sounds that pop out of all kinds of places, it's like a carnival. And maybe for some stuff that works, but you don't want to distract. You don't want to be distracting people by a carnival-esque um, mix where you don't think about it in the song and you just kind of put stuff in So the immersive, I, I see it more, it's an immersive production, not an immersive mix, because it's not just, not just mixing, it is, has another layer on top, it's a production layer. And this is often in studios not really taken care of because they're just seeing it as a mix or, or, or artists see it as a, as a new mix. But actually you have so many possibilities. You can completely destroy a song. It, it comes out as something which just makes no sense or it is completely different, will touch it to, as the original intention was. Or you can you know, make, really expand on it. So, but the, so you have to have a different mindset to do that. And if you start from the very beginning to have it as an immersive, uh, it's a different starting point as a, as a songwriter, composer, wh whatever genre you're in, then, then you're thinking about just a stereo concept. And um, th there is also a production flow, you know, as a, as, an, as a producer you think immersive as a production. And not just, oh, I have it now, I put this drink, this over here, this over there, and this over there, and I'm done. Right. Yeah? And then done, it's just two hours, and done, well, next song, go ahead. I can, I can give you an example okay. today. If if you watched when I was started the day, I was going in and doing panning moves and adjusting things because I didn't like the way they were. I thought some things didn't make sense, so I always get this phrase that we do what I call sound design to an extent. We think about what we, what we want the design of the 3D to be or the immersive to be. So I spend more time not on the balances, I probably spend more time on creating the space. I see. So, creating space for all the instruments to move. Where, the, where there's a conversation, conversation. Like, conversation. In, like in the last piece that we just did, the percussion has a definite conversation. Mm -hmm. 
so I moved things around the room so you could hear that conversation between the tabla loop and some other loop or what the hi-hat's doing, so. I like what you did with a female vocal on the saxophone, you know, kind of Right, because they're going out. back and forth, because she would sing, yes. then the sax plays. Yeah, and, and that's what we talk about as we create a conversation mm -hmm. inside the piece. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And the last question I wanted to ask is the the adoption of the immersive audio. Like, once we create all this beautiful music, where do we go to play it? Like, how do we make, how do we invite people and how do we showcase our music? My iPhone. <laughs> right. well, my, I mean, if you, for instance, this is one place, um, but... Um, so you're talking about the immersive audio now being... In other words, it's available simplified. Through, through, uh -huh. um, through a lot of streamers. And if you have the right hardware and you have headphones, then you can hear it that way. You can hear it on sound bars. Which, um, very few people, as I said, are going to have this kind of speaker arrangement, but sound bars are really great. They can really give you a great experience. Or if, uh, you can also have a this concept good is actually nothing new. I mean, this goes back to the Renaissance. Vivaldi already had concepts of immersive sound, so he put in the villas, in the Venetian villas, where his music was performed, specifically uh, designed for, uh, he puts maybe, say, the horns, on the left side, the, the violas in the rear, on the balcony up, some, some choirs or some violins. So he put the musicians, he split the orchestras up in different parts and located them in different uh, areas. So when, when the listeners were in there, they had already surround sound and, and higher and lower sounds because they had been put on, on balconies uh, in the late Renaissance, early Baroque.